You know food is good when it's healthy food, but you kind of feel like you're getting away with something. I mean, I'm not gonna say this is a pint of ice cream, but it almost tastes that good. <laughs> this video is going to fall into the category, I think, of fancy, impressive dinner. Still easy to cook. It's going to include a butternut squash puree, grilled artichokes, and a pan-seared sea bass in a ginger lemon white wine sauce. Here we go. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to get going is the butternut squash. Your oven, you're gonna to wanna to turn that on to 375 degrees. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated by squash. It's kind of awkward looking. People don't know how to peel it. So I'm hopefully gonna show you what I think is the easiest way to just get this in the oven. You're just gonna cut off the end, cut off the other end. You're gonna slice it in half. There you go. You've got some seeds inside. Uh, we're gonna scoop those seeds out, for which I will need a spoon. It's a perfect time to be doing a recipe like this because it's October. And this kind of reminds me of Halloween, scooping out seeds. There you go. Let's see if I can do the next one a little less messy. Now I'm gonna carve out this one um, and just gonna have it go right into my little garbage bowl. And maybe you should let me know what you'd like me to make for Halloween. Do you want treats for your little children, toddlers? Um, do you want Halloween cocktails? Do you want, um, I don't know, a Halloween pasta? Let me know what you might like to see for a Halloween video. So see how easy that was? I just got the seeds out of that. So this is what's gonna go in the oven. I'm just gonna put those out. I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil. I really just, I really don't need that much at all. So I'm just gonna use the cap, sort of a little bit on each one. I can spread that around on top of the squash. So I'm gonna put two cups of water in the base of this sheet pan. So these are gonna go in the oven at 375 for about an hour. We want them to get really nice and soft. The next thing we're gonna get on the stove is caramelizing an onion. And uh, it takes probably about a half an hour to truly, in that deep caramel colored sense, uh, cook down an onion. I'm gonna slice it in half and then just peel off the outside. This would definitely be a thing where you could use a mandolin if you have one. You want these to be really, really as thin of slices as you can, as you can get them to be. Those are all going to go into this pan here. I think caramelized onions are probably one of my favorite go-to flavor additions to almost any dish. They're great on a burger. Um, they're great in soups. Um, they're great on grilled cheese. Uh, and this time, this onion is going to go into our butternut squash puree. You've got your onion sliced very thinly, either with a knife or a mandolin. Uh, it's going to go on low heat for probably a half an hour. Um, you're going to want to keep an eye on it, make sure they're not burning, but they shouldn't be burning at that low of a heat. You can sprinkle a little salt on it, uh, maybe half a teaspoon to get the whole thing sweating. You could also use not more than a tablespoon of, oh, a grapeseed oil uh, would probably be good. Sometimes I try to get away with not using any oil, um, but you can do either way. The trick is though not to go higher than the low to medium heat because otherwise you'll burn the onions and then you just want to keep an eye on it. Could I say that more times? Low heat, keep an eye on it. The last thing we're gonna get prepped is the artichoke. This fancy meal, and I guess that's why I call it a fancy meal, because it's working with a couple of vegetables that a lot of people are intimidated by or don't really know about, and I think in some way that sort of makes them fancy because it makes them a little bit elite. Not everybody cooks them. I happen to grow up outside of um, what I consider to be the artichoke capital of the world. I've been eating artichokes a long, long, long time, um, a lot of people don't even know what an artichoke is. Uh, so this is it. Um, they're really good for you. Um, 
some of the stories about them, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but they say that the uh, nutrition in them can lower bad cholesterol, it's got antioxidants, um, anti-cancer, anti-inflammation, like really good for you. And you have to be careful because it has sharp, needly points on the end. First thing I want to do is cut it in half. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that is just picture worthy. You can see that this is the artichoke heart right here. And that's the part that everybody loves eating. I love eating the leaves too. Um, but this is all very stiff and it's hard to break that apart without it being cooked. I'm gonna add about five or six beautiful sage leaves. I always love sage. It's so soft. It's like velvet. <laughs> I didn't really touch my face with it. My hands are clean. Um, but it is really soft. It's a, one of my favorite. And it's going to be so good in, in this butternut squash puree. Because the artichoke is so, it's so difficult to get the leaves off of a raw artichoke. And you kind of have to carve it away with a paring knife. I thought that might be too difficult. So this way, we're going to put them in some boiling water. I'm going to check them at 10 minutes just to see if I'm able to get these leaves off of them a little bit easier. I think that would be the most approachable way for people who aren't used to cooking artichokes to make friends with your artichoke. <laughs> That's the color that you would have on your onions after about 10 minutes. So really, that is the beginning and the biggest part of getting this meal together. Everything is sort of on the stove starting to cook. Now would be a good time to start to, you know, run upstairs and put on your makeup or set your table and light a few candles if you're gonna do this for a dinner party. Um, or you could go, I don't know, make yourself a glass of wine and watch a little TV for 10 minutes before you come back and check on everything. This is what the caramelized onions are starting to look like. So you can see they're starting to get brown. And there's no shame in adding just a little bit of water to your onion pan. So sometimes you just you you just feel like you want a little bit more moisture in there and so don't worry if you need to add just a little tiny bit of water to keep it going for another, you know, 15 minutes or so. Mm. Okay, so the onions and the sage are coming along. The artichokes have been boiling for about 20 minutes, so we're gonna take those out now. Be sure to try to let all of the water drain out. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to the bottom of this pan, just to be able to get all that goodness off the bottom of the pan, all that good flavor. I'm gonna turn that heat off. And we can just let the onions rest while we're waiting for the squash to be finished roasting. And these artichokes are gonna cool. And then we'll move on to the next step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna peel away these leaves. Now, these aren't garbage. At this point, let's see. Yeah, at this point, that is very edible. So we can keep these leaves and these can be served separately or you can just eat them as a snack. If you're not familiar with artichokes, these truly were one of my favorite things growing up. Now, a lot of people, you'll get served in a restaurant an artichoke leaf like this, and they'll give you um, a side thing of either like a mayonnaise or melted butter, and you dip it in it, and then you're basically just using your teeth to sort of peel off just this part. You're not eating all of this just this meaty flesh at the end. It's, it's a good lesson for yourself to taste a food like an artichoke, like a steamed artichoke. Taste it before you have to feel like you have to dip it in butter or dip it in mayonnaise, because maybe you'll like it. And um, for sure, it's better for you. What we're after here is, so I, just to be clear, I am gonna keep these leaves and I am gonna eat these. As you get farther into the artichoke, what we're really after for this meal it's just the heart. So now that everything's been peeled away, the last thing we want to do is we want to scoop out, there's these like little hairs in here that you really do not want to eat. 
Now that this is nice and soft from having been boiled, it should scoop out pretty easily. So this is what the artichoke is looking like. And that's the hairy part that you wanna be able to scoop out of there. I just want you to remember when I do those close-ups, I'm here by myself cooking in real time. There we have a cooked artichoke heart that's all peeled away. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna saute this off very quickly in uh, an olive oil garlic. So to save us extra dishes, uh, we're gonna saute the artichokes and the fish, by the way, all in this same uh, saucepan that we used for the onions. Um, and because we're gonna do the butternut squash puree in a Vitamix, I'm gonna just go ahead and put, uh, and by the way, that's what color they turned out to be, um, really beautifully brown. And I've got about five sage leaves in there. And there's no reason to clean this because that nice um, onion flavor is going to go well with everything that we're, we're cooking. To saute the artichokes, the first thing we need to do is chop up two cloves of garlic. I think you guys have seen me do that trick before um, where you just take the garlic and you sort of push down, smash it down with your knife and it helps take the, uh, the little peel, the little white skin off of <laughs> the garlic. Okay, so I want these to be little pieces. So I'm doing the same thing that I would do with an onion, which is I slice across and then down and then uh, you just end up with little minced pieces in case you missed that. I'm just slicing across and then down just like an onion and then across the whole thing it'll just give you little tiny pieces. This garlic is going to go in the saute pan with some olive oil, olive oil, voila, about a tablespoon. And I'm gonna let that garlic uh, just saute in that oil. Um, did I say medium high? I think more medium. Um, I meant medium high for the artichokes, medium for the garlic. And we're gonna let it get golden brown uh, and kind of get that garlic flavor into the olive oil. And while we're waiting for that, um, our uh, butternut squash has been in the oven. Um, for a little over an hour and we're going to take that out and scoop it into the Vitamix. So I need these to protect myself from the hot oven. Okay, these look beautiful. I'm going to show you. So this is what roasted butternut squash looks like. It smells so good. So I am just going to be scooping this out you don't want to have the, the skin on the outside because that's too tough. So I'm scooping this out. I'm just going to throw this all into the Vitamix. That's, that seems to be a good way. Kind of hold it with tongs and then scrape it down. Yeah, that's working well. I was gonna say, it just looks so buttery, and then there you go, butternut squash. Does it seem like I'm winning the battle with the butternut squash? <laughs> so there we have that. We have uh, caramelized onions with a little bit of sage that was also cooked, uh, the butternut squash, and now, I got this fabulous white truffle oil from my friends at Truffle Shuffle. You should go um, online and check out that company because you can have real truffles. They are expensive, but you could have real truffles shipped right to your house. But you can also get 
truffle oil, which is not that expensive, or truffle salt. And if you like truffles, you can put truffles on a lot of things. Now, um, truffles is a thing. You like it, you don't like it. Um, fresh truffles, I would always go with fresh truffles if you had a choice. The flavor is really mild and much more approachable. I'm just gonna do, let's see what I get here. Oh, that's enough. That was probably half a teaspoon. Oh boy, and you can smell that right away. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside and we're going to finish up our artichokes. So the sauteed garlic I've sort of pushed aside and I'm gonna lift that out and put that on the plate to keep set that aside because now that the oil has a nice garlicky flavor in it, I'm gonna turn up the heat to like a medium high. And then I'm gonna put our artichokes in it. Just wanna get a little bit of color on them. And I'm gonna season them with a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Oh yeah, that looks nice. I know uh, many of you have uh, commented on all the tools that I have in the background. I do have a plan though, by the way, to use the air fryer soon in a video, so make sure you come back and check for that. But now we're gonna use this Vitamix. We're gonna make sure the lid is on tight and that is gonna go. You'll see it takes a little while to get through the bigger chunks. I'm gonna just flip the artichoke onto its top because I just wanted to get as many sides of it to have a uh, color as possible. Okay, so that is done. Nice, smooth puree. I'm gonna set that aside. Artichokes are done. Got a little bit of nice color on them. Those are gonna be delicious. And now uh, we're moving on to the fish. Um, so I've got two beautiful pieces of sea bass here, uh, about um, an inch thick. And so that total time, I feel like is gonna be about six minutes, six to eight minutes, uh, four minutes on each side. This is doesn't have skin on it. If it did, you would want to cook it skin side down, which would be delicious. I think you've seen in some of my other videos um, that I like to make the salmon skin. You can do the same thing with sea bass, um, but this, does, this didn't, didn't come with skin. So I'm doing salt and pepper. I've got my pan that I've been cooking everything in on medium heat. I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of butter. And that. Then I'm going to mandolin in some fresh ginger. Got about like an inch of it. Okay. So that's in the butter there. Ginger's in that butter. Then I'm going to place uh, the fish that's seasoned with salt and pepper right in the middle of that ginger butter. I'm gonna take a half of a lemon and squeeze that on top. And I'm gonna put a little more salt and pepper on the other side of the fish because I didn't do that yet. While I'm waiting for the fish to be finished. I'm gonna just get some of this puree on the plate. If you want it to be really fancy, you could do the thing where you swipe it across. Maybe your artichokes are like that. Thinking about how we're gonna plate, plate the fish over there. Um, but that looks like a good amount. So that's exactly how I wanted that to look. And after I've flipped it, uh, I'm gonna leave it go for another four minutes. I'm gonna add just a smidgen of white wine. I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit more lemon. 
That's what that's looking like. There's our plate all ready for the fish. So I think the fish is done. And I think I'm going to serve it like that. I think that's what I would call a fancy dinner. That's not too difficult to make. It looks kind of like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I love serving food for people. It's my favorite way to show people how much I love them. Good luck in your kitchen. I hope uh, some of my tips might help. And uh, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, you never know what I'll be cooking up next. <laughs> it's my favorite part, it's the eating part. Okay, let's see. Oh, that's so good. Purees are really good. Butternut squash puree. Okay, so sea bass happens to be one of my favorite fish. Um, and see how it just kind of falls apart, almost like in little sections. Don't overcook your sea bass. I would say three, four minutes on each side maximum for that thickness of a fish. I'm glad I made two pieces because I think I might also eat the other one. Enjoy.